An entitled Karen demands that I hand over my bracelet so that her demon child can have it instead. But even though I told them that this bracelet had sentimental value, as it was a gift from my now deceased mother, this entitled Karen simply didn't care, forcing me to have to call security just to escape this crazy Karen. And I've never been more blown away by somebody's entitlement in my life. Here's what happened. So to start things out, I was out shopping at a little boutique at the Summit in Birmingham, and I was honestly just minding my own business. As I made my way to the cashier, this woman and her little girl, about six years old, both approached me. And the conversation that followed honestly blew my mind. Mind. This entitled woman looks at me and says, Excuse me, my daughter really loves your bracelet. So I look at her and I say, Oh, thank you. There was then an awkward silence where the woman just stares at me as I'm unloading my items at the checkout counter. The entitled Karen then says, I said my daughter really loves your bracelet. So I respond by saying, Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I said thank you. Did I not? She says that I did, but that her daughter really loves my bracelet. So I said back, Okay, thank you for the compliment, I guess. The little girl then screams and said, Mommy, I want it. And right at that moment, this entitled Karen looks at me and says, Well, aren't you going to do anything? Now, when I heard this, I couldn't believe what she was saying. She then said, If you didn't hear her, my daughter wants your bracelet. I haven't seen anything like that before. I respond by saying, Oh, I didn't realize you wanted to know about it. It's from a company that I really like, and it's a really nice bracelet. You can wear it outside or charge it with a UV light, and it glows in the dark. You can order it online from their website if you want one. This one was a birthday gift from my mom. But this entitled Karen didn't want to know about the bracelet. She simply wanted the bracelet. She looked at me and said, I didn't want a sales advertisement. My daughter wants your bracelet. You can order another one. You need to let my daughter have it. When she said this, I honestly was blown away. I said, excuse me? You cannot be serious right now. The little girl then starts stomping her feet, screaming that she wants it right now. The entitled Karen then says, I am serious. She wants it. You are an adult and she's a child. You can get another one, so go ahead and give it to her. And honestly, at this point, I was so blown away by this lady's entitlement, as well as her demanding that I hand over my bracelet. Now, at this point, I was fed up. I say to her, look, I've been nice, but I don't know you or your kid, and I am not giving you my bracelet. Go bother somebody else. The little girl then starts to shed crocodile tears. She throws a fit by falling on the floor and starts flailing around while screaming her head off with a combination of screaming, I want it. I want it. Make her give it to me. You said I could have it. As well as many other annoying phrases. The entitled Karen says, Do you see what you just did? My daughter is heartbroken. You should be ashamed of yourself. Give me that bracelet right now. I look at her and I say, What I did? Your daughter is a brat and you are literally enabling her. Get away from me or I'm going to have to call security. The cashier who was watching this all, by the way, finally chimed in and said, Ma'am, did you want me to make that call for you? She also looked at this entitled Karen and said, You're going to need to take her outside if she's going to throw a fit. The entitled Karen then points at me and says, no, it's her fault. She then turns to me. My daughter wants that bracelet and I'll give you $5 for it. But I just laughed. I said, $5? It's not like I'm going to sell it to you, but this one costs $70. So the entitled Karen then says, fine, I'll give you $10. And I was so baffled. I looked at her and I said, lady, did you hear me? This is a $70 bracelet and I'm not interested in selling it. It was a birthday gift from my now deceased mother. But the entitled Karen wasn't taking that. She then said, but it's used. Look, I'll give you no more than $15. You should be giving it to me for my daughter instead of trying to extort money from me. Be glad I'm willing to pay you at all. I had basically had enough at this point. I said to her, you're crazy lady. Clean out your ears. I am not giving or selling my bracelet at all. You are literally just bothering me at this point. Take your screaming demon child and get out of here or else I'm going to have this cashier call security. The entitled Karen then gets up in my face. She says, what did you call my daughter? You're an awful person. My daughter deserves that bracelet. She's been an angel all day. You're making her cry. All she wants is that bracelet. I look at the cashier and I say, please just call security. I'm not dealing with this anymore. She then picks up a walkie talkie and speaks into it. The entitled Karen says, no, don't do that. We're going. We are going. I hope you can sleep tonight making a little girl cry like this. I look at her and I say, oh, don't worry. I'll sleep like a baby. Baby. Goodbye now. Then, looking at the cashier, I say to her, go ahead and call security. I have a feeling she'll be waiting for me when I go outside, and I can smell the crazy on her. I would also like an escort to my car if it's not too much trouble. The cashier says, I already did. That lady is unhinged, and I'm glad you're waiting. I was going to suggest that as well. I wound up waiting for a few moments for security, 
and I chatted with a cashier about how we were both shocked by the event and absolute entitlement and the nerve this Karen had. I was so relieved when security got there. The cashier and I filled in the officer on what had happened and he said he was happy to accompany me to my car. And sure enough, as I exited the store, the woman and her now silent child were sitting on the bench on the sidewalk outside the shop. They stood up and started coming towards me and it wasn't until they saw the security officer that they ran away towards another shop very quickly. I was very glad to see them go. And honestly, I've never had somebody try to guilt trip me or literally bully me into giving over a personal item that was very sentimental and valuable to me. Wow, that lady is absolutely insane. Who in their right mind would go up to a stranger and be like, give me your bracelet right now, my daughter wants it. Like, are you crazy? First off, the original poster's right. She was absolutely enabling her demon child. This kid clearly gets what she wants anytime she wants. And she was used to always having somebody say, yes, you can have it. And this was one of the few instances where she didn't get her way. And this stupid Karen clearly didn't know how to handle it. And the fact that she was trying to undercut the value of the bracelet, which by the way, it clearly had really significant sentimental value. It's not like you're going to sell it for like, what, 15 bucks? Like, come on, this lady's so weird. She not only like demands it from you, but then she tries to act like, oh yeah, we're negotiating a price. $15 is all I can give you. No more. It's like, lady, I'm not selling it. Are you serious right now? So honestly, good for you and the cashier for having your back because that entitled Karen's behavior was absolutely atrocious and there's no reason for anybody to ever be treated that way. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My awful job treats me like garbage on a daily basis and even when I got injured on the job, they literally did not care about my injuries and instead made me feel guilty about doing less. And honestly, at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. So for some starting context, I worked at an extremely toxic work environment and the owner only hires a specific ethnic group and anyone who is not part of that group is treated unfairly and generally ends up quitting. I was brought on board into a managerial position with the promise of increased pay and benefits. The offer seemed convincing enough to quit my two other jobs, seeing as the pay would be sufficient enough. This is probably the biggest mistake I've made had I known the things that would transpire next. Fast forward two years later, and I have dealt with months of dealing with biased treatment, shady practices, and a lack of transparency. Last week, a guest requested some warm water, and at the bar, we have a hot water dispenser that heats the water up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. The general rule is that you need to serve the water mixed with cold water at a 50-50 ratio so that it's just about lukewarm. As I was dispensing the hot water into a cup, my coworker ended up behind me without letting me know. I turned slightly, collided with her, and splashed the scalding water onto my left arm and hand. I threw my hand under cold water immediately and notified my employer. At this point, I left in the middle of my shift to get checked out at the hospital. Before leaving, my coworker kept asking me, who's gonna cover for you? It doesn't even look that bad. I had no words and I was not surprised at that response. Moreover, I wasn't even sure if the store was insured with WSIB given their track record, but thankfully they were. Soon after getting treated, I was diagnosed with second degree burns. The next day came and I provided my employer with my doctor's note as well as the required forms. She refused the form my doctor gave me and said that I needed to make a separate report online. I was a little bit confused at this point unless things have changed for some reason as I've been injured on the job before at a different restaurant and my boss at the time patiently walked me through everything and literally just handled the rest. It honestly seemed like my current employer wanted to avoid filling out an injury report for some reason. After filling my report online, WSIB contacted my employer and that was only after everything was said and done. Finally, I was allowed to take some time off of work with some modified responsibilities. Given their dismissive attitude, it just seems that they're trying to guilt trip me and downplay my pain. What's even crazier was that I wasn't allowed to work under modified conditions until I was greenlit by WSIB. Essentially, I was busing and serving with one hand, pushing through my pain, all the while my co-workers are assuring me that it is not that bad and that I'm over-exaggerating. I actually ended up feeling guilty because I was missing out on work or slowing down because of the pain. I'm now being treated differently after working my butt off every shift. And this is all while my co-workers stand around eating and ignoring their responsibilities. It must be okay because the owner has no issue with it. In fact, they join in on the fun. I feel like I'm being led to believe that I'm crazy for wanting a more enjoyable work environment that's not filled with overly blatant racist co-workers who smile at your misfortune. 
I feel so stupid by giving up on other opportunities to get out. And considering the job market, it just seems so stupid to quit now. I am actively looking, but it just sucks. Just looking back on the entire situation infuriates me. Like this is what I get in return for my commitment and hard work. Has anyone else experienced something like this before? I just feel so dumb and bad because maybe I'm the crazy one. I'm just so tired of being treated this way and I honestly don't know what to do. Let me tell you something right now. I know exactly where you're coming from. It took a long time for me to realize at previous jobs where they didn't treat me right that it didn't matter how long I worked there or how hard I worked. Nothing I ever did was going to be good enough. They were always going to gaslight me. They were always going to treat me like garbage. They were always going to look down on me no matter what. Even if I was excelling at every aspect of my job, it simply wasn't enough and they would never be satisfied. And honestly, you are in the exact same scenario. These people, no matter what you do, no matter how much they make you feel guilty, they will never appreciate you for the worker that you are. And that is so unfortunate and it's not fair. If I was in your shoes, and trust me, I was, I would be going straight back to the WSIB, which stands for Workplace Safety and Insurance Board, and I would start complaining about everything, report everything that they're doing. I wouldn't hold back for a second. That business is acting incredibly shady. There's no reason for them to be acting that way. And honestly, they deserve the headache in my opinion. Because look at the way they're treating you. They are literally, instead of firing you for doing something wrong, they're trying to make you feel like garbage and then make you quit. And that is unfair. You do not deserve that. So hopefully you find a new job sooner than later. Because literally anything would be better than this awful work environment. My entitled manager tries to get me in trouble for being three minutes off when I said I was clocking out for work. So I decided to maliciously comply and get some revenge. And as a result, my manager ended up getting fired. Here's what happened. So I worked for a water company for 25 years and I was on one of their most productive repair crews. That is until the new manager came in. Let's call him Mr. Jerk. We had a monthly rotation where you were on call for one week out of four and this would be for emergency repairs out of hours. On the day in question, I started work at 7.30 a.m. on a Friday and finished work at 3.15 in the morning on Saturday morning. So this was a pretty long shift. I get to work Tuesday morning and I get called into the office by Mr. Jerk and in informed that according to my vehicle tracker, I had left the yard at 3.12 a.m. and not 3.15 a.m., which is an attempt to defraud the company. Now, as you can imagine, I was absolutely fuming at this level of BS. I told him that at the time, I was covered in mud and sweat and just wanted to get home after completing a monster shift for the company. And I was blown away that he was genuinely making some kind of firestorm over three minutes. He said he was making me aware that I could be fired for it. So that's when I decided to maliciously comply. I said, that if we're going to be this petty, you can then take me off the emergency contact list for extra coverage, and I won't be starting 20 minutes early each day either. I'll now be clocking in at exactly 7.30 in the morning, and I shall be heading out at exactly 5.30 p.m. No deviations whatsoever, and you can explain to your bosses why productivity is down and you are struggling to get coverage for emergencies. We'll then see how important your three minutes are when they are costing the company a lot of money. Little did I realize at the time, but the guy's job was bonus-related and linked to our productivity, which absolutely tanked after that because all the other guys followed my lead, except for a few who were just trying to brown nose. Three weeks go by of an absolute garbage show and customer service complaints about their work not being carried out in a timely manner. My productivity dropped from seven jobs per day all the way down to four, and Mr. Jerk gets called in by his bosses to try and explain what in the world is going on. He tried to spin some BS story that I turned all the guys against him for no reason and that this was the result. But little did he know is that I actually trained his boss when he first started with the company nearly 15 years prior and wanted to come out and find out what we do and experience how hard the job is. He surprised me by working a full month on the repair crews before going back to the office. Anyways, the boss calls me in to find out what is really going on. So I explain how he had been using the tracker to monitor what time I'd left the yard and that I guesstimated my finish time and I overestimated by three minutes because I was absolutely dog tired after working a shift while being on call. So, in conclusion, the manager was let go for misuse of the tracking system, as it's only supposed to be used for emergencies and not monitoring, and we had our on-call system reviewed to cut the hours we were having to work. And honestly, Mr. Jerk absolutely had it coming. Wow, that guy really was a jerk. Like, think about it for a second. He was getting bent out of shape over three minutes. Three minutes literally was gonna make him act like a complete weirdo? Like, did he really want to try this game? It is always so funny when managers try to flex their power only to realize that the workers themselves really do hold the power. Everybody 
ganged up and said, you know what? You want to be petty? Fine. We'll be petty. We'll be the most petty people on earth. And in my opinion, I think this is absolutely needed. Like seriously, this guy was acting insane. He was trying to get you in trouble and being like, wow, you might get fired for this. Instead of being, I don't know, maybe reasonable. It was three in the morning. Are you really going to get bent out of shape over three minutes? So good for the original poster for putting this guy in his place. And I find it ironic that he's the one that actually got fired while the original poster ended up walking away scot-free. I blocked my psychotic cousins after they made my life a living nightmare. But now I'm worried that I made a mistake. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. I first want to start off by saying that I was never close to my cousins. I haven't seen them since 2017 at my grandma's funeral. Of course, we exchanged a few text messages back and forth, but it was nothing to speak of, to be honest. Last year, they both tried to get involved in my relationship with my now fiance. They followed him on Instagram, which I thought was a bit weird because I rarely talk to them, but I try not to think much of it. One of my cousins, we'll call her Anna, that's not her real name, even sent a direct message to my now fiance. Then she texted me a screenshot of the direct message. She said in the conversation that she wanted to talk to him to make sure that he's good enough for me. I found that really weird because this is someone I haven't seen since 2017 and I rarely talk to in the first place. I told her that I don't feel comfortable with this conversation that she's having with him. And I even told my now fiance to not reply, unfollow, or block, or do whatever you need to do. My other cousin to the sister of Anna, we'll call her Melissa, also not her real name, caught wind of what I sent to her sister, and she made my life a living nightmare. She went after me through direct messages in such an intense way that I didn't think was humanly possible. So I blocked her on Instagram. Then she continued to bother me through my number in regular text messages. So I was forced to block her there too. I was so distraught that I was a complete mess. After all of that, I started receiving really creepy prank phone calls. My fiance was getting them too sometimes. I would get random calls from weird numbers, voicemails of someone screaming like they were being brutally hurt, or even one of a man making really awful noises, if you know what I mean. It was so bad. This was on a continuous loop and it never ended. I went to the cops and I ended up changing my number. My mom then started receiving the calls too, but not nearly as bad as what I experienced. She did some research from the numbers and somehow linked all the calls to my cousin and her friend. She found out that my cousin Melissa's friend is a close childhood friend of Melissa and he has some mental issues, like he was in and out of mental institutions. When she confronted Melissa, she said that her friend and herself were just prank calling and it was all in good fun. She told both cousins, Anna and Melissa, that they needed to leave me alone because they made my life a living nightmare. And if I get one more call or text message like that ever again, there's already a record with the police. They then both stopped. So fast forward and I recently got engaged to my now fiance and I guess news broke to my cousins. I got a text message from Anna and I didn't respond since I have nothing to say to her. My mom even said both Anna and Melissa direct messaged her on Facebook. I don't know why she is still Facebook friends with them, especially after all of this. And she even replied to the both of them. I got a direct message from Melissa on Instagram and I instantly felt horrified. I didn't open the message, but I checked the account and it is a new account that she seemed to have made. And I guess she did this just so she could be in contact with me since I did block her on her previous one. Honestly, I don't know what to do. My mom seems to think it's nice that they're reaching out to me and Melissa even told my mom she is sorry about what happened last year. She even thinks that both Melissa and Anna are being nice for supporting my engagement. I don't trust these people and I don't want them in my life, especially not Melissa. And I don't want them to ruin my life any further. I'm so scared of Melissa. She just doesn't seem like a good person overall. Now for some additional context, my mom wasn't close with her brother who's their dad and they had their own toxic relationship. And I even noticed that my uncle viewed my Instagram story. I don't follow him either. So it really seems like he was peeking around without letting me know. I texted my mom and she told me to block him as well. I told her I'll block him and Anna because I don't trust either of them. My mom never wanted me to block Anna because she's worried that it will start up with all the calls again and that this will just cause more problems in our lives. I felt like my mom wanted me to keep Anna in my life when I really don't want her there. So I blocked her and now I'm panicking. Should I unblock her? I'm seriously worried about future problems. I'm so scared that she'll find new ways to contact me. I'm scared of my mom's reaction over me blocking her. I mean, should I do this just for the sake of everything, as well as to prevent issues with my mom? Or did I do the right thing by cutting her off? Honestly, this is so messy, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. This is ridiculous. Please tell me you're not actually thinking of
talking about unblocking these weirdos. You want to know why they're coming back to you and they're acting all nice? Because they want back in your life so that they can bother you and your fiance. They want to get between your marriage and they want to ruin everything for you. They're not actually sorry. They just want an excuse to be there and cause more problems in your life. Like seriously, why would you put up with that? Your mother is being very naive or she's just welcoming this punishment in her life. Like in my opinion, this incident would only happen once because I would never talk to these people ever again. There is no way I'm going to put up with their awful behavior or the awful things they did to me. Like sure, they might actually be sorry and this might be a chance for all of this to blow over, but you know what? You went through a nightmare and back all of last year. Why on earth would you ever want to welcome that back into your life? Like if I was in your shoes, I would see almost right away that Anna and Melissa are just trying to play games. They want to try and pretend like they're family. They want to be welcomed back into the conversation and somehow get involved in your life. Meanwhile, Anna was messaging your fiance and trying to make sure that he's the right person for you. Like seriously, these people are crazy. I would not bother with them for a second and if I was in your shoes, I would ensure that they do not show up to your wedding. Like seriously, take the steps now so these members of your extended family don't try and come in and ruin the entire experience. Like think about it. For months they sent creepy text messages and these awful prank phone calls and then when they were confronted about it, they're like, oh we were just playing. Like really? You were just playing? Meanwhile, you were knee deep in a nightmare and you couldn't find any way to get out of it. And you're supposed to just turn around and be like, oh, it's fine. Welcome back into my life. No, I don't think so. This is one of those situations where I would say, yeah, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Because if I was in your shoes, there's no way these people would come back into my life. I would block them everywhere and say never again. Because truly, I think that these people have ulterior motives. And before you know it, if you do let them back in, they are only going to try and mess with you all over again. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, check out Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked in the description.